Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this National Emergency Coalition Conference call with STAND. And uh, we're going to have our uh, illustrious leader, E.W. Jackson, the president of STAND, to take it over. Bishop Jackson, go right ahead. Well, thank you very much, Martin. I don't know about illustrious folks, but here I am. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> let's, let's open up with a word of prayer, and uh, and then we'll introduce our guest. Heavenly Father, first of all, we're so grateful that we have the opportunity to meet this way, to talk freely and openly about the issues affecting our nation and our lives. And we thank you so much that we are citizens of this great nation, this constitutional republic, and that this nation is founded on the principle that rights and freedoms are not given by the largesse or the beneficence of a government or a governor or a president or a king, but rather they come from you. They are inherent in us as human beings. They are our God-given attributes that we are free, that we have freedoms and rights associated with that, that no government can either give or take away. But Lord, we are now being governed by people who don't believe that. They really believe that the government is the final arbiter of our freedoms, our rights, even our property, and we pray that you'll help us to restore this nation to its Christian, its Judeo-Christian foundations so that our freedom can be preserved. And Lord, we're reminded that even you, the sovereign God of the universe, don't force people to serve you. We, we serve you voluntarily, but we don't serve you at all. And we pray that you'll help us to bring this nation back to those fundamental principles that give everyone the freedom to determine who and what they will worship and what they will do with their lives and their property rather than have government dictating that to them. Now, Lord, we pray for the Christian community and, and our, our guest today, Bill Murray, who is going to address the, the horrible persecution, indeed genocide, that is taking place around the world against Christians. We know that we're having some problems right here in our own country, but not at the level that's happening in the Middle East and other places. So we pray for those Christians, Lord, who are being killed for refusal to renounce their faith in Jesus Christ. And we believe you for victory over this kind of evil and for leaders who will call it evil and call it what it is and deal with it appropriately rather than making excuses for it and being wishy-washy and unclear and uncertain about the nature of the enemy we face. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, folks, again, thanks so much for joining us for another edition of this National Emergency Christian Conference Call, National Emergency Conference Call. We, we deal with a lot of Christian stuff, but uh, we deal with all kinds of issues. Uh, my guest today is a very dear friend of mine, and I've known him for a number of years. Um, all of you probably know of him in some way or another. Uh, his work has probably crossed your path. He is the chairman of the Religious Freedom Coalition in Washington, D.C., and for, for 30 years, Bill's been in the forefront of social con socially conservative issues and, and dealing with the kinds of issues that are confronting our country right now. In the 1990s, he founded the first commercial Bible publishing company in the Soviet Union, and for years, his organization has operated evangelistic tours to the Soviet Union for Christians. Now, he's dealing with some things he's going to talk about today in the Middle East. Uh, he's traveled there numerous times, so we're going to be listening to someone, folks, who knows firsthand what is going on, not what he's read, not the reports coming back but based on his own travels and his own eyewitness um, experiences uh, in some of these areas. So uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to hear from him. I'm saddened with what is going on because when I talk to him, I realize it's even worse than most people know because they're not giving it the attention that it needs. Uh, but I'm, I'm gratified that someone like Bill Murray is out there trying to make sure that this issue gets addressed. So uh, with that, Bill, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Take the time to share with us what, what is going on and what you're doing about it, and then I'm sure there'll be questions. And folks, don't forget, if you have a question, press star six when the question comes to mind. You will not be inter interrupting our guest. He won't hear that, 
but it'll get you in queue so that when he's done speaking, you'll have an opportunity to get right to your question. Bill, go right ahead. Uh, thank you, E.W. Uh, first of all, I really want to clarify uh, a lot of people, you know, they talk about persecution of Christians, and and we talk about a uh, uh, a baker in somewhere that, uh, you know, was fine because he wouldn't uh, uh, make a homosexual cake, wouldn't do a cake for a homosexual web, uh, wedding. I think that our problem in the United States is that we equate that with the literal holocaust that is going on in the Middle East. And this is a holocaust in Northern Africa and and the Middle East. And uh, it is comparable to what happened to the Jews uh, during World War II. Uh, it is it is compatible to what happened to the Armenians in, in, in Turkey. And I, 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 I am just constantly amazed by the number of pastors that uh, uh, say, oh, well, we have persecution in this country, too. We don't know what persecution is any more than we know what starvation is in, 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 in this nation. We, we don't have a clue. Our idea of starvation is, is only having meat seven times a week instead of 21 times a week. That's our idea of starvation. Um, and and uh, what is going on, um, and, and, and the level of, per, per, of, of, of persecution, the level of death uh, that is not reported by the Western media is absolutely stunning. Uh, now, we have a program, and, and, and of course I, I do run the Religious Freedom Coalition, we have a program called Christmas for Refugees. And we set up that program, yes, to help the refugees, but the children, but also in order to try to make people aware in this country what was happening, since the media won't print virtually anything about the extent of what's going on, we figured that if, if maybe if you add children and Christmas to it, somebody will start to, to pay, pay, pay attention. But as part of that program, I was in um, uh, Lebanon and Jordan for Christmas. Uh, we had a thousand. Uh, we prepared a thousand meals for Christian children in, in Lebanon. A thousand Christian children in in, in Jordan. Um, the events, as best we could, were held a hundred kids at a, at a time uh, at different locations all through Jordan and all through uh, uh, Lebanon. Um, the children got a hot me meal. The families that brought them got a Bible. Uh, an adult Bible, a, a, a children's Bible, and two workbooks for the kids, an Old Testament, New Testament. And each family, uh, depending on the situation, either took home a, a big bag of $50 worth of food staples or got a $50 certificate to go be able to get food at a local store. This gave me the ability to talk to many of these refugees to find out firsthand what was going on um, the overwhelming majority of Christian refugees, of course, are middle class. Um, Syria, in particular, was not a third world nation, has not been a third world nation. Um, um, it, it just isn't. It had a, a fantastic infrastructure, new roads. The average Christian family there, uh, they, they owned their own home, had one or two cars in the garage. They were professionals. They had air conditioning. They had heating celebrated Christmas in much the same way that, that, that we would with a, a, a Christmas tree. Um, and uh, it, it is, uh, I mean, it'd be many parts of, uh, of, of Syria would be compatible to our, 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 our suburbs, or used to be. And it's been totally and completely and utterly destroyed in the name of us establishing a, a democracy there. Um, and the, the middle class lifestyle, if, if they start, if the war would end tomorrow and they could start rebuilding, uh, it would take decades uh, to get the society back up to what it was before we decided to back Saudi Arabia's, uh, um, you know, and, and this was a Saudi Arabian plan of getting rid of the Shiite government and installing a Sunni government. And, and you know, when they failed to do it, they came to us to, to help them. And, of course, we jumped right in to our buddies, the Saudis, because they're such so wonderful and democratic and pure and clean and, and so forth and so on. Uh, in Iraq, the situation is even work worse. Uh, Mosul was the, the, the last center of Christianity. Um, 
th- those were the hardcore Christians that stayed through everything else that went on in Iraq. When Mosul was overrun, um, uh, there was just the devastation of the Christian community. They, um, they, they, the Muslims of, that took over uh, gave them three choices: um, you know, either either convert, uh, die, or leave. Those were their choices, and uh, the overwhelming majority left. I talked to one man. He had a 600 uh, meter uh, a home, square meter home. Uh, he now lives in six square meters in the basement of a church in a in a curtained off uh, area. Um, the most amazing thing about this, and what isn't covered by our press, is that in Iraq, 85 to 90 percent of the ISIS fighters are Iraqis. Um, the, in Mosul, the homes were taken away by people's next door neighbors. In Syria, that isn't the truth. That isn't what's going on. Ninety percent of the fighters are are out of country fighters. There are no, there aren't any Syrians fighting the Syrian government. These are all um, out country. They're from Jordan. They're from Saudi Arabia. They're from Turkey. They're from the United States. They're from England. They're from France. They're from Russia. They're from China. They're from everywhere. But there are no Syrians fighting the Syrian government which is why it is so difficult for our administration um, to, to, quote, find the, the moderate Syri- Syrians fighting the government over there. There aren't any fighting the government is, 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 the, is the biggest problem, except the, uh, the, the only uh, Syrians that are fighting the, the government there are the, the are, are hardcore Sunnis that, that were the first to cause the uprising in, in, in homes in order to bring it about. Uh, I can't begin to tell you the level of death, the level of destruction, uh, the stories I hear um, directly from people, not secondhand, of what they have seen, including uh, the slitting of the throats of Christian men over a basin so that the blood can be collected and passed around so that, that, that fighters can wash their hands in it in order to get their, 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 their 72 versions, virgins. Uh, what we need, and and uh, I'm going to go to to questions, but what we need is we need pastors to get up in the pulpit and and start to tell the truth, um, and to start to talk about the extent of the persecution um, worldwide of Christians, uh, to talk about the Open Doors report that clearly shows that Christian persecution. Um, has risen to the point where Christians have been the, the, the most persecuted group for, for now for decades, but it, it has reached a crit- critical point with literally thousands of Christians dying almost every month in, in, uh, in, in Nigeria. Entire villages uh, wiped out. The persecution of Christians in Pakistan is brutal. Saudi Arabia, you know, the, the, the arrest and torture of, of, of Christian um, uh, guest workers incursions in, 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 into Chad, um, you know, the, the, the situation uh, going on in, 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 in Yemen now to where even the, uh, the, the Shiites have had to revolt against the government in, in order to stop the, the persecution of anybody that, that wants any, that is, is secular-leaning. Uh, and uh, I just read, and I, I recommend, if people want to look it up, I think it was a town hall, there was an atheist by the name of, name of Robert uh, Jakinski, and he wrote an article titled, Why Islam is More Violent Than Christianity, an Atheist's Guide. And I'm going to be very frank. I, I can only dream that some American pastors would get up at their pulpits and, and deliver sermons um, like the, it, 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 in, in, in favor of Christianity over Islam that this atheist has delivered, uh, uh, quoting uh, from um, uh, quoting from from our scriptures and comparing Christianity to to uh, Islam and explaining why Islam is violent and Christianity isn't. If an atheist can explain this. I can't understand why pastors in the United States can't address the situation and and explain to their people the difference between the religions and why we have to stand up and combat this merciless slaughter that is going on throughout the world today. Um, 
And uh, if anybody would like to take a look at some of the photographs and the children and things, um, it is at our Christmas for Refugees site. Christmas for Refugees, it can either be done with the number four or, the, or spelled out, or just put Christmas for Refugees in. And uh, anybody that wants to check our website and in, on an ongoing uh, basis, it's uh, uh, Religious Freedom Coalition. It pops up number one with any uh, uh, search engine and can take a look at, at, at what we're doing. But I've sat down and talked to the people. I have been with the refugees from uh, Missoula just two, two months ago, just actually a little bit over a month ago. I sat and I talked and I interviewed them uh, and um, uh, the situation is far worse than what we think. And help that's coming to them. I, I, I went to one one uh, Catholic church where trailers had been set up outside. This is the unbelievable part. The trailers were donated by the government of South Korea. And everywhere you look, the aid that's coming in there to help Christians is coming from everywhere except the United, even China, it's coming from everywhere except the United States and, 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 and Europe. And most of the aid from the United States and Europe goes to, to Muslim refugees, the same ones who are, are fighting the secular government back in Syria. It's bizarre. Wow, Bill, that, that is, I mean, it's chilling, frankly, uh, folks, if you have questions or comments, we see that some are already getting on press star six and line up to ask Bill questions. Bill, let me start it off, though. Uh, look, pastors need to talk about this stuff, but we know that the culture, uh, m much of this persecution is coming from Islam. Uh, so speak to two issues. One is, is this just the activity of a small group of Islamic radicals, or is there something broader in the culture that makes this kind of, of genocide against Christians happen, when I say in the culture of Islam, uh, A, and B, why should American Christians care? I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, there's an attitude, well, that's over there, and, you know, we got our own problems over here, and and talk a little bit about why this ought to be so critical to us, because I think it is a critical issue for Americans in general, but Americans, Christians in specific. Well, if 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 Christians do not identify themselves as they, if if, if American Christians ad identify themselves as Americans but not Christians as part of the body of Jesus Christ, then there's no problem. They they can turn their back on on Christians anywhere else in the world. Um, However, if they claim to be a part of the body of Jesus Christ, they should care about their brethren in the church. And I, I think that is the biggest problem that, that, that we have, um, is that American Christians, particularly evangelical Christians, don't see themselves as part of the worldwide church. They don't see themselves as Christians. They see themselves as a special breed of American Christians, and nothing else matters uh, uh, other, other than that. And my answer to that is, 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 is maybe, maybe we should take a little bit of a close look at the Bible and understand that, that the very first time that the Lord appeared after his ascension was on the road to Damascus in order to stop Saul, later the Apostle Paul, from going to Damascus to kill Christians. And now we have the government of the United States of America, our government, giving guns to people to go to Damascus to kill Christians. And if, if, if we don't care about that, I think we will fear, we will care when we face the Lord. Uh, and I, the, this is the ancient church. These are the roots of the church. The first church outside of Jerusalem was in Damascus, and for for us to um, uh, to say it is okay, forget it. We'll just dig up the roots of the church of the church, burn them, destroy them, uh, destroy the monasteries that were built in the first century. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is is um, you know my church and the confetti cannon and and the latte machine in the lobby, and that's all that's important to me. Uh, it it is it, either either you feel
feel the, the burden of your brethren or you don't. And if you're a Christian, you should feel the burden of your brethren. Okay, Martin, let's let's go to the questions. Okay, great. Um, again, press star, uh, star six if you have a question, but we're going to go to caller number 2844. Caller 2844, go right ahead. Hey, uh, Bill, thank you so much for what you're doing. This is Bill Cook. Uh, Pastor Bill Cook, I am. I'm thinking of the verse in Hebrews three, thirteen three, where where uh, the writer said, "Remember those who suffer adversity as being also yourselves in the body." And um, you know, this. I think this threat, personally, and, and if you could comment on this, I think this threat is very real to the United States because we know that um, many of the individuals within the Islamic community in the United States embrace the identical ideology that ISIS does. And we also know that they're coming across the southern border and into the United States. So I think we, we face a very real threat. I think God holds us accountable, not just in heaven, but in time. We will reap what we sow if we if we don't stand with our brethren. So would you comment on that? Uh, yes, I, I do agree with that. And to, to a little bit further answer uh, uh, E.W. At, at, at the same time, this is not some small minority which is distorting um, uh, Islam as a as a peaceful religion, despite what John Kerry and Barack Obama and, and others have to say. Uh, th- this is actually why I, I recommended the article of this atheist, uh, Why Islam is More Violent Than Christianity, because he goes into the, the, the basis of Islam, which is... Uh, um, uh, which rejects God as being logical, um, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, rejects God as being a God of reason. Um, they they actually don't think that if you, you, you take a piece of paper and put it into a flame, um, uh, Muslims do not believe that, that the, the flame is burning the paper. They believe that, that, that Allah is burning the paper. Uh, they have rejected all of... Um, uh, any form of of science or technology or anything else um, that uh, uh, anything classical, anything reasonable, any kind of of logic that would defy the absolute rule of of Allah in 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 um, in the in every in in lives. Um, this is something that is core. One of the things that the atheist, this atheist brings up that I have brought up time and time again. Um, except he does it differently than, than I do, is that as Christians, of course he doesn't say that, but I do, as Christians, we want to live as much like Jesus Christ as we can live. Christ was a man of peace. Christ admonished Peter for drawing the sword in, in the Garden of Yosemite. Yosemite. In, on, on, on the other hand, Muslims want to be more like Muhammad. He was a um, he had multiple wives. He was a warrior. He was a conqueror. He was a military uh, leader. He he lived by the sword. He ordered death. He killed. Um, you know, he he stole. He conquered. This is the center of the faith. And you take the the, the two individuals. You take uh, the the uh, the Son of God. You take Jesus Christ, and you take Muhammad, and you put them side by side. And one is upheld as a model. Uh, uh, for one religion, and one is upheld for a model for the other religion. And and how can you say that the majority of Muslims want to live the life of Jesus when the center of their religion is a warrior? That That is so incomprehensible to me, and it shows a basic denial of um, uh, of, of what Muslims themselves believe. Okay, let's go to the next question. Yes, okay. Caller number 0309. Caller 0309. Go right ahead. Hi, it's such an honor to be on the phone call with you. My name is Cindy Lucas. I have a tea party down here in Stewart, Florida. I've been trying for several days <clears throat> to try to get my priest. Uh, I'm a Catholic, and my priest is always speaking out from the pulpit. He's trying really, really hard to get everybody to understand what's happening to the Christians. Um, and we've been trying to get the churches together and maybe put a panel together, a panel discussion. So right now we're sort of at the situation where he's want, he he wants to do it, but if the diocese might just say no, um, and I've gone to several other churches, not all Catholic, 
There's only one other church, and that's the Baptist church here that's willing to speak out. I mean, we have such a problem. I, I And I don't understand it. This is a very conservative county that I live in. Um, people from the churches belong to the Republican Party. They're conservative. They understand. We've had Bridget Gabrielle here speak about all of this. And yet people still don't want to get involved. And the churches are not willing to step up to the plate. Do you have any suggestions? Okay. Uh, you know, maybe a way of doing it that may make them think twice about it and maybe get more involved. Well, the first thing I can say is I'm 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 really glad that you have a, a a pastor that will work on it and help and and I would say that that you need to encourage him uh and to uh, uh that your group needs to at the very least get the the the, the priest and the Baptist pastor together um if they can't get everybody else involved then then let them call something um and to to hold uh, some kind of a meeting and to draw people um and to uh if you know there's always got to be activists and the and the activists that are willing to do something have to be willing to step forward even when they don't have another 8 or 10 or 15 people to step forward with them and i would just say that you you just really have to get behind them and encourage them uh to do something and the same has to be said everywhere uh, uh more people need to go to their pastors and say what about this? Can uh, you know? Uh, you know what? What can we do? What can we say? How can we change minds? How can we change hearts? Uh, ignoring this this horrid situation, and you know, I keep hearing this. There have been no uh, jihad attacks since 9/11. That's not true. We had a jihad attack at the Los Angeles airport. We had a jihad attack in North Carolina. We had one in South Carolina. We had one at the, at at at, 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 a, at a Texas uh, a mili- military base. Um, we had uh, one I at the Boston. We had one at the Boston Marathon. We had one at the Boston Marathon. And I would like to point out the biggest secret of all is the Wash the, the 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 snipers around Washington D.C. This was a Muslim ma- madman who wanted to start a war a race war in the name of Muhammad, and they managed to to go through the through through all of the publicity and everything, and never mentioned once that he was a Muslim. Uh, so yeah. this is um this is this is it is it is constant it is going on in Europe uh, uh constantly the programs that are going on in in North Africa and oddly enough we somehow as the United States of America possibly because of our relationship with those 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 uh evil sadistic madmen that run Saudi Arabia because of our alliance with them we seem to always wind up on on the wrong side of 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 things um, when it comes to this, and um, I, they, we we have to forget about some of our our um, uh, you know the, this this idea of we we can't insult something that's evil or call it evil when when in in fact it is. Are there good Muslims? Yes, they're good Muslims. The problem is that the good Muslims are about the same as a pro-abortion Catholic. Uh, the the good Muslims aren't Muslims. The good Muslims are secularists. And they're from a Muslim tradition. I have I've talked to, to people that well I'm a Muslim and they say, Of course I'm married to a Catholic and, and, and my kids won't go to the mosque and, and this guy's not a Muslim. He, he, you know, he's a businessman. He he, he right. he's a secularist. He he could join the ACLU and feel comfortable. Or Americans United for Separation of Church and, and, and State. Um and and what we are assuming to be moderate Muslims are Muslims in name only. If you really, really believe, then your hero is Muhammad, and he was a, 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 a warrior. Wow. Let's go to the next question, Martin. Sure. Call the number 0323-0323. Go right ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing your insight and perspectives. This is Pastor Threed in Charlotte, and I thank you, Bill, uh, for your great work. Uh, one of my questions is, um, certainly, why is that? Congress as a whole. I know we have a, a new freshman crew come, have come in, but why isn't Congress in an uproar uh, about this genocide? And it, it is globally, and it's all stirred certainly by by the Islamic um, community and, and so certainly the militants. Why is Congress not doing more in your estimation? One of the the truly sad things uh, that we had happen uh, in the last Congress was when we accepted $500 million from Saudi Arabia 
in order to train their mercenary troops in Syria. And uh, that that is kind of the key to the to the problem that you're you're talking about. Not that direct cash. Uh, we have a nuclear powered um, uh, Pakistan um, that we give billions of dollars to that that horribly persecutes Christians. Uh, we have uh, oil rich Saudi Arabia, which uh, you know the the within days of the new king coming in they, they were they beheaded some woman for poor poor woman for 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 adultery stoned her and and and, and i mean the just uh um we have all of this persecution going on and the big problem that we have in our congress there are there are some that speak out um i mean in the senate we have um you know we do have Rand paul and uh in on the uh, on the House side, we have Louis Gohmert and, and, and a few others that that will get up and speak out. But the majority of them, they're caught up in the establishment, and and it's about our, the, our money and our allies. And um, you know, we can't say that that uh, that that this is the problem. We can't identify it because our good buddy Saudi Arabia is financing the terror. So we can't say anything. We can't do anything. And somehow we need to get past that and realize that these guys are going to have to sell their oil to somebody, whether we, we, we claim we like them or not. Um, and, uh, and until that happens, we're going to have silence on on, on Capitol Hill. Uh, I, I do my best. I'm here. I'm on the Hill. I bring this up as often as I can. I have had uh, lunch with, uh, with, uh, with Senator Scott. And uh, uh, he does understand the problem. I've had dinner with Rand Paul. He understands the problem. I've had I've had uh, dinner with Ted Cruz. I've tried to talk to him about this. That's a whole other issue. I can't even go into it because he's a hawk. And uh, the hawks up there, it doesn't matter who we're going to go to war to or what reason they're they're ready to go. And uh, that that presents a problem in in dealing with this because. Uh, um, oftentimes the hawks are willing to, to 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 just mount up on the same horse with the jihadists. Excuse me, with the Islamists. Um, so it's uh, it it is difficult. But we need people right now. We let me let me digress. We have a postcard program right now. We have delivered hundreds of thousands of postcards uh, to um, uh, to um, uh, the uh, to to congressmen and senators. Asking them not to finance uh, any more jihadist fighters anywhere in the world, or any more Islamic fighters anywhere in, in the world. The program is going very, very well, um, and we are having some influence. We are getting some response from congressmen and senators, but we need more pastors to pick up the phone mm-hmm. or go down to the local office. Mm-hmm. And, and and this is why. When a congressman gets a, a postcard, and I've had congressmen look at me and say this to me. Uh, Louis Gohmert was one of them. He said, Bill, the reason we don't get anything done here for the faith is we don't hear from the preachers. He said, you know, when a, when a constituent calls, that's one person. When a pastor calls, we figure it's 500 or more. And he said, if, if the preachers would get involved in this issue, if the preachers would get on the phone, if the preachers would write letters, he said Congress would start to pay attention because he, he said that the, the, the congressmen and senators know they have influence. And he said our biggest problem here in getting anything done is the fact that we don't have preachers in, involved in this issue. Let's take uh, one more question. Uh, Bill, let's go to one more question real quick. Sure. Very good. Caller number 8803-8803, go right ahead. Hi, Mike. Uh, this is Michael Valerio, and uh, thanks a lot, Bill, for all you do uh, for Christianity. You know, th- the other side has us distracted with all these other issues that no one thinks of, uh, that, of persecution, even in this country, never mind the rest of the world. Uh, look at what uh, the left has done with uh, Ebola and Ferguson and the pol- police uh, brutality issue. Uh, the the whole country is involved. We need an Ebola-sized issue to wake up America uh, on persecution. And uh, and I don't know what that could be. Maybe you can give us heads up on it. Well, we're going to have an Ebola-sized event if we fail to recognize the the, the you know where 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 the problem exists. I'm I'm quite quite sure of that. 
um, you know, we uh, our, our attempt to uh, pretend that that this isn't coming to our shores or that it's not going on here is is just a, a flat out lie. Um, I, I wish we could have as much attention paid to the the um, the 800 Christians that died in the world in the last two or three days as we could to the 800 cases of measles we have in in the United States. But um, you know the, the 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 mainstream media has its its own agenda, and that's whatever causes the most clicks on the internet. Um, uh, we have to cause those clicks to be about this issue. And the way to do that is to is to get congressmen and senators and others to talk about it. And the only way we're going to do that is is to really put some significant pressure on them from their constituents and from the pastors and priests in this country. Well, Bill, I'll tell you. And by the way, folks, if you're getting feedback, hearing feedback from me, I apologize for that. I'm not. I can't hear it on my end, but I've been told that uh, you may be hearing some of it. Um, Bill, look, it's it's it is a major situation, and and the last questioner just suggested that you know a, Ebola has killed some people. We realize that, but Ebola captured the imagination of the media. That was all they were talking about for a period of time. They've never talked about this issue, and this continues to kill, as you said, thousands every single month. It is a worldwide plague. It's an epidemic. And yet they're not paying any attention to it. So, how you tell, tell people again, Bill, how to plug into what you are doing? Well, again, uh, go to the uh, we have uh, the Religious Freedom Coalition, and um, uh, we have uh, if somebody wants to get involved in the the, the postcard uh, uh, campaign, we do have a a link directly to it. It's uh, terrorpostcard.com. And they don't have to do anything with us. It is just all that's there is the uh, the text of the message that we're sending to Congress, and uh, and and a, a way for um, uh, somebody to be able to find out the name and address of their congressman and senator. Um, we don't get email addresses. We don't collect nothing. Anybody can go there, copy the text of it, um, and uh, put it in a, a, a short letter, find the, the address of their congressman and senator, or telephone number, or fax number, and uh, send, it, send it to them. And again, that's at um, terrorpostcard.com. Bill, thanks so much for the work that you are doing. We really appreciate it. And, and come back anytime to bring us up to date on anything that we need to know. Uh, and we will continue to urge people, particularly pastors, to get involved in this vital issue. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, W. God bless. Okay. God bless you, too. Um, folks, I didn't say it in his bio, but for those of you who are not aware, Bill Murray is the son of Madeline Murray O'Hare. Uh, that's right. The son of, the, of, of perhaps the most renowned atheist in our country's history, her son is a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and is telling people about him and their need to believe in God. So there you go. I think God gets the last laugh. Um, look, folks, I, um, I think it was Cindy from Florida who asked the question, what is it going to take? And, and all of you suggested this in one way or another, those who, who uh, question you know, I don't know what it's going to take. I really don't. Uh, other than a move of the Spirit of God to just awaken people, which is what we're working on, you know, you wonder, and, and folks, I'm, I'm not trying to be shocking, but I'm just trying to be real here and honest. I mean, is it going to take one of some pastor's relatives, a member of their church, uh, someone that they are close to that's near and dear to them to have their head cut off by some of these terrorists? Is that what it's going to take? Uh, is it going to take some move over here to capture a bunch of kids that, that starts to affect pastors directly because members of their churches are involved? Is that what it's going to take? Because I'll tell you something, that, that will come. If we don't address this issue now, that will come. Because all of this president's purported uh, discussions and diplomacy is read by militant Islamists as one thing, weakness, weakness, and weakness invites attack. 
And I think that they will be emboldened the more, the weaker he becomes and the more he wants to negotiate with Iran and he wants to have prisoner exchanges with with these various terrorists and he wants to release them from Guantanamo Bay because they're really okay people. Yeah, they could be your next door neighbor. Uh, we just made a terrible mistake of putting them in Guantanamo Bay. But, you know, once we release them, they're going to be model citizens. The more he does that, the more he sends a signal to these terrorists worldwide these people are at the brink of defeat, and all we've got to do is press them because they're not interested in fighting. They're not interested in standing up for themselves. We can run right over them. And, of course, that's exactly what ISIS did in territory that we once held, that was once under our control. So we've got a major problem, and we better not wait until it is at our doorstep. Bill started out talking about persecution in this country. I think there are different levels of persecution, but I've said this many times. If those of you have heard me speak in some venues, particularly at churches, will hear me say that I believe American Christians are some of the most spoiled people in the world. We really are. I mean, Christianity was birthed in persecution. American Christians don't know anything about that. The the worst we've had to deal with is what happens when somebody's offended by what we do. Uh, an American Christian like like Kelvin Cochran down in Atlanta was fired from his job because of his Christian views on marriage, and that's a terrible thing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not making light of that. But it ain't being beheaded. Um, and yet around the world, people are being tortured and killed, children being slaughtered. We don't face anything like that. And here's the lesson. If we don't address it, before it gets here, it will come here. Now, I believe that. If we don't address it before it gets here, it will come here. And to me, that's what, what's happening overseas. Now, I'm sure we love our brothers and sisters in Christ, and, and that's important. But this is not just an issue that Christians in America ought to be concerned about. This is an issue that every American ought to be concerned about because it will be soon coming to your neighborhood or to your city or to your state if we don't address it while it's in a foreign land. And, of course, we, the same thing happened with Hitler, right? We knew that at some point either we fought in Europe or we'd be fighting on American soil because Hitler had America in his crosshairs. And we know that these folks do because they made that clear. So, so I would just urge everybody get involved in, in this fight to, to – save Christians from this kind of brutality that is happening to us. And I say to us, because these are indeed our brothers and sisters in Christ. And by the way, it underscores a point that I make many times too, which is uh, the problem, racism is really not an issue. It's a symptom of a deeper issue. The deeper issue is, is sin. It's man's inhumanity to man. It's the wickedness of the human heart. Because in these cases like Boko Haram, who are they killing? They're killing people of the same skin color they are as brutally as anything that would ever be attributed to the Ku Klux Klan or anything else, any other evil, racial, racially animated uh, organization, they are killing people of the same race. Because, folks, it's not the race that's the issue. It's the sin and the wickedness of the human heart. And we, the sooner we understand that in this country, the sooner the Christian community conveys that to, to the American people and they get that, the sooner we will get past our racial issues with, with reconciliation and, and awakening and healing, and we can address together as a unified people, particularly as Christians, we can address the issues that we face in this country that I believe God wants us to address. Uh, now, that brings me to the last thing, and that is our... Um, reconciliation service. It's called Rekindle the Dream. It's going to happen on February the 25th, starting at 7 p.m. at the Congressional Auditorium in the Capitol Visitor Center in Washington, D.C. It's going to be an historic event, folks, because this racial tension that has been created as a result of what happened in Ferguson and then in New York and in other places, it has not abated. Um, I was talking to Bishop Harry Jackson earlier today, and he was telling me that they just had a confrontation between police and some groups on Thursday night in Ferguson. It's still very hot there. Nothing is really getting resolved. Uh, and so, folks, this 
service is about resolving these issues. It is about awakening that is the centrality of God and the need for the centrality of God in our country, in our culture, in our communities, in our families, in our lives. It is about reconciliation, the need for people to come together as one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And it is about healing, the need to forgive, the need to let go, the need to get beyond the past. Uh, Folks, are we going to still be having this kind of stuff 50 years from now? A hundred years from now, if Jesus tarries, I mean, how long do we continue to obsess over things that happen 150, 200, 250, or for that matter, 50 years ago? You all realize it's been over 50 years since Dr. King was assassinated. 50, that's a half a decade. I mean, a half a century, folks. A half a century. I mean, are we still, are, so, so you go back a hundred years before that. To, to the um, the end of slavery, and of course that means Jim Crow in the South has been it's been a half a century since that ended. How long are we going to interpret everything through the lens of the racial history of our country? Christians have got to interpret things through the lens of our faith in Jesus Christ, our lens, the lens of the Word of God, not through the lens of race not through the lens of of culture, but through the lens of the Word of God. And the Word of God teaches me that there's neither male nor female, black or white, slave or free, uh, all are one in Christ. That God does not see skin color. He says he sees not as man sees, but looks at the heart. Dr. King extrapolated from that and said we should judge each other not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. And that's what that service on February 25th is all about. I hope you will come. If you haven't RSVP'd yet, please do so. The seating is limited, folks, and there will come a point where we'll have to say no to people because we believe that we will fill up the 450 seats we've got quite readily. Um, so I would I would ask you to RSVP now, reserve your spot now, because it is going to be an historic service. Let me mention one more thing. You all probably got this in your emails But on Thursday nights, starting this Thursday evening at, uh, I believe, at 730, uh, we have a – go ahead, Bill. That's correct. It's 730. 730, okay. 730, we have a a prayer time uh, for this service, folks. You can't succeed without prayer. You can't achieve anything meaningful without prayer. Uh, And by the way, we we would ask you, if you're a prayer warrior, if you have a heart for prayer, get on the line and pray with us, pray for us, Uh, because we're going to continue this, by the way, after this service, because we've always wanted to have a prayer ministry as part of STAN, and, and, and we're going to have that now on Thursday nights, and we hope that all of you have a heart to pray. We'll join in and have the time, have the ability to do so. We'll join in. Um, and one more thing, and then we'll close out. Uh, this coming Thursday also at 12 noon, we have our ministers taking a stand conference call. We hope you'll join in. We're going to be talking about two things, the an awakening project, which I haven't talked a lot about on this call, but it's a very important, very big project that we're going to work over the next two years to try to awaken the Christian community through the activity of pastors reaching out into their own communities, and we're going to help them to do that. Uh, And the second thing we'll be talking about is our racial reconciliation service, rekindle the dream on February 25th, uh, and actually asking pastors to play a part in that service, to, to speak or read scripture or to pray, but to play some role in that service. Uh, so if you're a pastor and you're on this call, please join us for that call. If you didn't get that information, you can email uh, bill at standamerica.us or martin at standamerica.us. Either one of them will be able to to give you the information that you need in order to join the call on Thursday. That's 12 noon Eastern time. Thanks so much for staying in the fight. Remember, we cannot be defeated if we will not quit because God always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. God bless you. We'll see you next Tuesday at noon.